I wrote an article about this. I think I sent it to you yeah. um, for an industry magazine. And the title was Dom Reports, Can We Trust Them? And the answer is no, essentially. So they, they were made to standardize diamond grading, essentially. And that did work for a long time. Then what happened is people within the industry, like in jewelers, retailers, they didn't really need the expertise that was required to check diamonds against the reports. Because they're like, oh, well, we don't need to send people away to do these courses now because we just buy the diamonds with these report cards and they say what they are. Over the last probably 20 years, um, people have been manipulating that system. So they'll send a diamond to, it's very well known, there's certain laboratories that they can send their stones to and they'll give them like a really, um, what's the word, favorable grading report. The problem with it is that the, the misconception is that the certificates, and I have to, um, you know, catch myself all the time because I sometimes mistakenly refer them to, in the end work, I'll say, oh, can someone pass me the diamond, sir? And it's not a certificate. A certificate attests a fact. A report is something which is like, you know, an opinion. It's someone's personal opinion. So if I grade a diamond and I say it's a GSI2, you could grade the diamond and say, I think that's a H, so one lower, right? And then you could grade it as well, and you could say, I think it's a H VS2, okay? So they're all really, really close to each other, right? Which is fair enough. That's like within the margin of error, you know, accounting for maybe different lighting in the room, you know, whether your eyes are good that day or not, etc. cetera. But we're, what we're seeing time and time again is a report will come through and it will say it's, um, so the lowest clarity it can be for it to be eye clean, which means you look at it just with your naked eye, can't see any inclusions. The lowest it can be is SI2, okay? So like those that I showed you just now. Now, if I showed you both of those, just loose here now, you wouldn't be seeing any inclusions, okay? What's happening is the uh, the SI2 grade is no longer really SI2 for a lot of people, you know, and that's like night and day. It's like you can either see an inclusion with the naked eye or you can't. There's no like debate between that, really. People are grading stuff as SI2 when really it should be included or PK, which is like the worst grade, which means you look at it and you see an inclusion, okay? Big problem with that is that there is a huge price difference between an SI2 stone and a PK stone. And if you... How, how much of a difference are you talking about? Like it can be huge. much as like 20%. Oh. Yeah. No, if you if you think like the average spend um, of an engagement ring is £2,000, 20% of that is significant. If you think there's people out there that spend way more, you know, that becomes exponentially mm. more significant, doesn't it? And this is something that you'll never find out if you are buying a stone online. Because if you buy the report and it comes through, you're not comparing it to anything, you can't then say to the person in front of you, oh, why is it I can see an inclusion in that, but I can't in that? I think the big issue is blocks. Most blocks don't even know what that is. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if genuinely, if I, was, if I was doing that, bought one offline, and I'd look at it, as long as it looked okay, I'd be like, yeah. yep. Yeah. And to be honest, there's some part of that is fine. But the big part for me is that you've been taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's the thing. I like. I'm. That's what I'm all about. Like, you know, we'll get onto the lab grind diamonds thing in a minute. Um, there's a place in the market for that, but it, that is another big part of like, you know, people are being taken advantage of mm. because they're not being told the entire truth. 